Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so excited to be bringing God's truth to you in this 2023. The year has begun. So, hey, we've got a lot that the Spirit of God will have us do this year and have us share with you. Praise God. Now, before going to today's broadcast, now I know last week we were having live broadcast, so uh, we didn't kind of have an opportunity to do this, but you should have learned it by now every day ask god for your daily bread praise god so are you ready hey i'm expecting a lot this year i don't know about you so when we declare this or make this request let your mind be big you let your expectations be big praise god join me right now as we declare say father i demand today my daily bread and i receive all of it hallelujah in Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Hey, now, we are going to be sharing on what I have titled, The Most Important Thing. The Most Important Thing. We are still at the beginning of the year. So it's important that you, you get your mind set on what is most important. How do you function this year? That you know that at the end of the year, but you don't have to wait to the end of the year to know if you're making progress or not. You, you can tell at the end of every month. You can tell at the end of every week if you are doing the right thing. Praise God. So turn your Bibles with me to Proverbs chapter 4. Proverbs chapter 4. We're going to be doing a bit of a study. And I'm sure you're going to like what the Spirit of God will help us share with you proverbs chapter 4 and verse 7 it says wisdom is the principal thing wisdom is the principal thing therefore get wisdom and with all thy getting get understanding now he said wisdom is the principal the principal means the most important the chief of it all praise god the most important thing it says wisdom is the principal thing now if he says wisdom is the principal thing it's important we understand what is wisdom and if this is the important thing now this is the beginning of the year so it's it's very very important that you know what to put your focus on and what to release, you know, what you what you withdraw from. Now he's telling you that wisdom is the very principal thing. And then he says, therefore, what? Get it. Get the principal thing. And then with all your getting, as you go pursuing the principal thing, he says there is something you require. And he says that is understanding. Because this is the truth. If you have wisdom and you lack understanding, you, you, your life is going to be a bit haphazard. Things are not going to be smooth for you. You will know what to do, but most times you will not know how to do what you know to do. And that will become a challenge unto you. And you don't want that. Praise God. So when he says wisdom is the principal thing, hey, what exactly is he saying? The chiefest of them all. The most important thing is wisdom. So get wisdom. Okay, then the question goes, how do I get wisdom? Now, if this is the principal thing, it is important that you know how to get it and number one number two how to function by this thing that he says is the principal thing and then, so the first question comes to mind how do i get wisdom if it's the principal thing how do i get wisdom i know you rush to say ask god for wisdom yes but then when you are asking for something, it's important to know what you are asking for. What exactly, if you want a car, for example, you don't just say, I want a car. You need to know what kind of car do you want. Do you want an SUV? Do you want a saloon car? Do you want a pickup? 
Do you want a bus? Do you want a van? You see that now? They are all cars. But then, you don't just say, I want a car. In your heart must be the expectation of what you desire. Understand this. Asking God for wisdom is one thing. Knowing how wisdom operates. So when you begin to receive or knowing how to receive it or knowing when wisdom has been given to you, it's another. So we're going to be looking into how wisdom operates. What is wisdom? What exactly is this thing we call wisdom? I know you've been told wisdom is the, is the um, ability to apply knowledge or something like that. Now that's what they tell you in school. That's what they tell you uh, outside. But let's find out what is really wisdom. Turn your Bibles with me to Proverbs chapter 8. Proverbs chapter 8. So we begin to look at the character of wisdom. So now he says, Doth not wisdom cry? Wisdom is crying. Wisdom is crying. And understanding put forth her voice. She standed. Now he says, Wisdom is a she. She standed, standed in the top of the of high places. By the way, in the places of the paths. Now, I'm going to read this from the... Now, I was reading the uh, Old King James. Let me read from the New King James. Thank you, Holy Spirit. It says, watch now. It says, does not wisdom cry out? And understanding lift up her voice. She takes her stand on the top of the high hill. Beside the way where the paths meet. Now, he's telling you, hey, wisdom is crying out. Remember we say, how do we get wisdom? Now, first and foremost, we are now realizing that wisdom is calling for you. Wisdom is crying out, hey, hey, I'm here. Okay, wisdom is crying out. Then I shouldn't be struggling to think about how to get wisdom. If wisdom is crying out, now he says something. He says, she takes her stand on the top of the high hill. Now, what does it mean wisdom takes her stand on the top of the high hill? This is what he's saying. And then the second thing he says is, beside the way where two parts meet. Okay, what's he describing? How do I find this now? Hey, listen. What does it mean when it says wisdom takes her stand on the top of a high hill? Now, you know, naturally, when you say something is a high hill, it means that thing is higher than you. See that now? That thing is higher than you. Anything you say, oh, this thing is high, it means you are lower than that thing. So he's telling you that, hey, whenever you see a high hill, now high hill here stands for anything that is above you. Any decision you want to take that is above you. Anything that supersedes your understanding. Anything that supersedes your knowledge. It says wisdom is there standing. You see that thing you're thinking, how am I going to accomplish this big task? He said at that point where you're thinking those thoughts, wisdom is standing there. Oh, I don't know this thing. I don't know how I'm going to face the Okay, wisdom is standing there. That's what they say. She takes her stand on the high hill. Wherever you find yourself at a point or whenever you find yourself at a point where you don't literally or practically know what to do, he is telling you at that high hill that you're looking at, wisdom is standing there. And then he says, beside the way where two parts meet, you know where two parts meet, it's a junction. Now that's where you come to a place of decision. Many times in life, now the truth is this, every second of your life, you are making decisions. Every point in time in life, you are required to make decisions. Now you have, if you're walking on the road, you get to a part where you have to decide, should I go left or should I go right? Which road is shorter? Which road is faster? You see that now? Because the road might be shorter, but slower. 
You understand? If you're, if you're drive, if you drive, you understand what I mean. Oh, this road is short, but there's traffic, a lot of traffic on that road. So it's best you follow the longer route. You will get to your way or your destination faster. Now that's a decision you have to take. And then he says, when you're struggling with those thoughts, wisdom is right there. Many times people, now this is the beginning of the year. Many of you have made new year resolutions. Many of you have told yourself, oh, you know what? I'm not going to be doing this again. Rather, I'll be doing this. Okay, you know, you will get to that place where you really have to make the decision. It's all easy to tell yourself, this year, I will never um, smoke again. This year, I will never um, steal again. Okay, fine and good. You want to be a better person. But the truth is, when you get faced with the challenge that used to make you steal, when you get faced with the challenge that used to make you smoke, when you get faced with the challenge that make, makes you that used to make you do the wrong things you do, what are you going to do then? You see that? It's easy when the pressure is not on you to say, I will not do this again. But when the pressure comes, this is what happened to every temptation. This is what happened to every time pressure is applied in, in, in against you to tempt you to do something. There is always a moment of decision. Take note of this. Whenever there is pressure on you, there is always a moment of decision. Nobody, now this is one thing you have to learn. The Lord taught me this many years ago. He said, son, if you want to live free from sin, free from every wrong thing that um, you like to, or you, or people engage themselves in, the first thing you need to learn is take responsibility for your actions. The Lord taught me that I said, take responsibility for your actions. Why did you do or why would you want to do the thing that you're thinking to, of doing? Sometimes you say, I don't know what happened. I just found myself. That's never true. They are not taking responsibility. You see, because the suggestion will be made to you. The pressure will be placed on your mind. But to move your leg or move your foot, one, just one foot, will be your decision. The question then is, why did you take that decision? You said you're not going to smoke anymore, or you're not going to drink again, or you're not going to fornicate again. Okay, fine. It doesn't stop the pressure from coming. The pressure comes. You think about it. You remember you said you're not going to do this again. But then at some point, you just tell yourself, you know what? Just this one time. You see, that was your decision. And hey, there was something your mind was on when you said just this last time. This happens to everybody. You don't wake up and see yourself and see light, you, the cigarette is lit and, and in your hands and then you start, you, you just realize it was, the smoke was coming out from your mouth and say, what happened? I don't know. I don't know. No, no, no. You took the decision to get that cigarette, to go buy it if you didn't have it already. To light it was your decision. It was your decision. Nobody tempted you where that was concerned. You might have been tempted to go back into smoking, even though you have said, I'm not doing it again. But now I come to the practicality of it. It was your decision. Now that's why God is going to judge us because we took the decision to do wrong. You remember the story of Esau and Jacob. Now you look at that story, very interesting story. Right before they were born, when they were in the womb, God spoke and said, Hey, woman, there are two nations in you. God literally said, two nations. And then he says, the elder one will serve the younger one. Okay. So if you want to look for who will be the great one, put your eye on the younger one. Now, that's that that word from the lord never said 
Esau will be foolish. It just said there are two nations. And hey, the younger one will, the elder one will serve the younger one. Now we, we have assumed for many years that God just wanted to destroy Esau's life. But let's go to the practicality of it. Esau came back home one day and he was hungry and his brother had some food. And he said, look, can I have food, please? And his brother said, hey, except you give me your bat right. And then Esau said, really? Is that it? He said, yeah. what is bat right? To hell with bat right. Please take it and give me food. He took a decision on something so important as that, but he treated it so flimsy. See, it was his decision to let go of his bat right. Now, another situation, his brother took his blessing. Okay, fine. But you remember, if you read the scriptures, he heard that he was already married. His brother wasn't married yet. But then he heard his dad, Isaac, tell Jacob, look, you shall not marry from all these ladies in this place. Go to your uncle's place, Uncle Laban. Go there and take a wife for yourself. Now the Bible says Esau heard the instruction that was given to Jacob. While Jacob obeyed and went to Laban's house, Esau said to himself, mm, So my father didn't like these girls that I married. I know what to do. I'm going to marry from Ishmael. Come on now. He had the father practically instruct Jacob where to go marry. He should have. Now, now you want to think about it this way. Esau should have said to himself, it's payback time. I heard what daddy told Jacob. I'm living right away to Uncle Laban's house. If I see any daughter there, I would marry. Why didn't he do that? Why did he choose to go to Laban, to go to Ishmael? And you know the truth? Uncle Laban had two daughters. Meaning, if Esau had gone to Uncle Laban's house, he would have married the Leah that Jacob didn't like. And they would all have lived happily ever after. So would you blame God for Esau's failure? It was his decision to choose the life that he chose. That's the truth. It was his decision. Now, why am I sharing this thing with, these things with you? These are details by which people fail and these are details by which people succeed. It's all embedded in their point of decision making. But hey, see what it says here. Wisdom, at that junction, should I or should I not, wisdom is standing right there. Our time is up for today. Praise God. Lots to share with you. But we are, we are taking this thing gradually because it's a series. I'm going to be taking the most important thing. I'll see you tomorrow. Today I pray for you that the Lord will open the way of wisdom for you. And today you will learn to take the right decisions that will catapult you to the next level of your life. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.